Attention please. This upload is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles GPTRIL. GPTRIL. Definitely a must see. Follow us. Hello, my name's Colin Fry, and welcome to The Sixth Sense. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I feel I'm being drawn up to the gentleman and the lady at the back there. Sir, who was it that liked the fish skate? That my grandfather. Your grandfather. And, you know, in skate, there's the, like, the, the long, um, bones, you know, like the long spine bones. Do you understand about him going... With the spine bones. <laughs> yep. The passing of your grandfather was like a great personal tragedy for you. Did he give you a pocket knife that you had to keep secret between him and you? My granddad did, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, he's just asking if you remember about the pocket knife. OK. Because you were told you weren't allowed to have it and he still gave it to you. That's right. Right, OK. And if, and if my mum found out, she'd still ding me around the ear. Right, OK. <laughs> Did you want to be a train driver? Yeah. <laughs> like, almost like so that you were obsessed with it? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Your grandfather's a little bit of a joker cos he's saying, I'm awful glad that you didn't, he said, because you have enough problems with that car of yours. <laughs> All your grandfather is doing for you today is just to show that he needed you to know I only had to go away in body. And he's just talk talked about things that have happened and things that you would remember. Just to show you, he has never really left you. I'm quite happy to say that I leave your grandfather's love with you. I didn't come um, fully confident that I would get a message. I was hoping, and I'm pleased that I've got one. Without a doubt. Do you understand about him going <laughs> with the spine bones? <laughs> yep. My grandfather always used to, on a Thursday, eat fish. And the first thing he used to do was take the bone out and run it through his teeth. Always. Um, quite. Every, every Thursday, he never, there wasn't a Thursday went by where he didn't do that. Did you want to be a train driver? Yeah. <laughs> right from early days, from when I can be a member. Uh, I always had a fascination with rail trains and I am a career railwoman. Did he give you a pocket knife? My grandfather gave me a pen knife and he always, he always said, keep this but make sure your mother doesn't find out because my mum would have took it off me. I was never allowed a pen knife and I never ever to this day uh, I've ever told her that my granddad gave me a pen knife. <laughs> As a regular feature of this series, I've been inviting people who I've never met before for one-to-one -one sittings. I feel it allows me to focus more deeply when spirits of those who have passed over choose to make contact. Hi, my name is Stuart Money. I work in air traffic control and I come from Ayrshire. My reason for coming to see Colin was to see if I could get any message from my brother who had passed a few years before uh, under uh, difficult circumstances and it would be reassuring to know it just exactly what happened to him. Okay, the first impression that I'm being given is I get the impression of uh, a male, a, a gentleman's mind 
trying to connect with me, trying to reach out to me. And the first thought or the first impression that he's giving me is a room. I suspect that this might be a bedroom mm. where at one time there were a lot of model aircrafts. Yes. All right. And I can see model aircrafts on shelves and I can see them hanging on thread from the ceiling. Yes. And this youngish gentleman mm -hmm. is actually showing me that these are something that is, this is something that is very relevant in his memories. Mm -hmm. You hold it, I'll stick it. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> the bedroom that uh, Colin described was my first ever childhood bedroom and it was littered with uh, aircraft uh, on the ceilings, on shelves, sitting on the windowsill, and it was 100% accurate. I associate the aircraft in the bedroom much with my brother because we used to make model aircraft together, and I used to be the supporting role of holding while he stuck. I mean, he got the executive job, I got the supporting role, and uh, it was quite funny he came out with that expression because that's exactly what he used to say, you hold it, I'll stick it. The feeling I had at first is thought that, that what I'd got was a son. But I now feel that maybe what we're getting is a, that this guy is like saying, Dad, Dad, Dad. And I feel that he needs you to know that, like, Dad's with him. Mm -hmm. All right. There must have been quite a short period of time between the passing of Dad and this man, your brother. That's correct. So I feel like the, like the two of them are together. I was always very close to my father. Very close. My father was like a best friend to me. Um, of everyone I've lost in my life, I think my father has upset me even more than anyone else. He was a, a good man. Uh, David was a bit more unconventional, but it didn't to say that I didn't feel pain when he died. I did. I never got my time to grieve during David's death. And um, all the grieving was done by my mother. And sometimes that was hard to cope with. And people don't realise just how hard it is not to let grief go. But it can be hard. The, because the words that I'm, the, that I'm getting was there was something between him and Dad that could not be anticipated. Mm. OK, and Dad went first. So then I feel that your brother must have had a big issue before he passed away about not getting something resolved with Dad. Mm. OK. It's sorted. And when my father was dying, um, when David was over in this country, uh, the last few days before he went back to South Africa, he didn't go to see my father, who was very, very seriously ill. Um, my father was very hurt by that. In fact, the whole family was quite hurt by David doing this. Your brother gives me the imp impression that he led or had a lifestyle that was considered for the time to be unconventional. Correct. Um, he, all right, my friend. He went against the trend. David uh, liked to drink a lot. It was his unconventional life was that he would test the boundaries of the law at times and it was maybe not a wise thing and people would tell him this. Um, his old demise really came round drink and uh, it is sad. I know brothers can quite often be close but he gives me this feeling of being like very close to you. <coughs> and poor guy I really do get this feeling that he's got these trying to put through this 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 intense gratitude to you of like really being the only one that understood him. It's possibly true. I like a deep conversation. Sometimes David and I have deep conversations. And you begin to understand what's making that person work. And uh, I knew how David worked. Tell me, I, I, I accept that he was like, went suddenly. Would you understand that the talk, suspicion or inquiry that was made at the time? Well, <coughs> yes, there is a, there's never been a uh, true definition of how he died. Right. Was it suicide or was it an accident? Right. I think that he needs to confirm something that you've always thought, hoped, believed. It was not intentional. Right. It was not a cry for help. David's uh, death was very, very sudden. It was a gun accident. And unfortunately it was gun and drink 
and the twain should never cross really. He had this gun and uh, the belief is that the safety catch wasn't on and uh, it was an automatic weapon and of course you don't need to nudge too much of an automatic weapon before it goes off and uh, I believe that that is what's happened. In a drunken steamer he's bumped the gun and it went off. Everything is taken care of here. And that's important for him. Yeah. My wife uh, has been quite instrumental in getting my sister-in-law to tell my niece, her daughter, David's daughter, the truth about um, how David died. And she told her daughter it was a car accident. And it's only just re recently that Claire's actually persuaded Irene to tell Karen the truth of what happened. Everything is now in order. Still, I'm going to say I'm going to, I'm going to leave David's love with you. Um, I feel that your, your brother just today wanted to say we're still connected, that our lives are still connected. And I'm happy to leave his love with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Strangely enough, the anniversary of his death is tomorrow, and uh, I only just thought about that when I came down here yesterday. So that's quite poignant. It is a comfort to know that on some personal details, which only I would know, that my father and brother have now settled their differences, and they now seem to be well on the other side. And it is a great comfort as well to believe that they, from the other side, are looking to this side and trying to take care of us on the other side. And that is very reassuring.